Hey, babe. Bro. What? You bought more whiskey. These are really hard to find. You don't understand. When you find them, you buy them. Yeah, but don't you have a lot of whiskey? <laughs> yeah, I'll take a, uh, uh, let's see, a Knob Creek 9. Neat, please. Knob Creek? Yeah, man. Nice, You, you man. like Knob Creek? Love Knob Creek, Dude, yeah. I, everything, Bro, we're Jim. supposed to be on a date. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, man. Sorry. Yeah, Knob Creek 9. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have anything going on. Hey, do we have any plans for Saturday? There's a bottle share. Another bottle share? So you love whiskey, but your significant other isn't as into it as you are. A lot of people have been asking, how do I get my significant other into whiskey? So we crowdsource some ideas. If you want to hear about them, stick around. You guys have been asking for ideas on how to get your significant other into whiskey. And I use that as a pretext to get Lindsay back onto the podcast because she hates cameras. Yeah, so. Yeah. They add 10 pounds and there's two on me. There's two cameras on her right now. Yeah, yeah so if you're thinking negative thoughts, it's just the cameras. She can't help it. <laughs> Even though you shouldn't be thinking negative thoughts because you're so beautiful. Oh, yeah. All right, so when we asked the Bourbon Real Talk community, if you had a significant other that was not into whiskey and they started to develop a liking for whiskey, what was the thing that did it? And the number one answer was cocktails. Okay. So, uh, and, and we even, we counted, and by vote count, we have the cocktails that were most mentioned as the thing that helped their, their significant other. Okay. Uh, so number one was the whiskey sour. Uh, two was Old Fashioned, three was Ginger Ale and Whiskey, four was Gold Rush, and five was a Sidecar. Have you had any of those? I've had a Whiskey Sour and an Old Fashioned. I think Old Fashioned is probably my favorite. Mm. They're it's a little the sweet for me. I like the, oh, she's the Luxardo Cherry. Yeah, How it's she the cherries. Them. Yeah. Like, bring me a whole bowl if you're going to make me an Old Fashioned. Yeah, sometimes we do make the, the bartender give her like a whole separate thing. Uh, they're just good. They're so good, yeah. And the technique was that as you developed your whiskey-loving palate, you use less of the other ingredients in the in the um, mixture, and then you increase the amount of alcohol until they were more accustomed to the higher proof. Uh, because usually the thing that keeps people from loving whiskey right off the rip is that the nail polish remover. Yeah, it's a little caustic. It's a it's a it's a little bit much for some people. So the number two answer for how to get your significant other interested in whiskey was finished whiskey. So... Wink, wink. Wink, wink. Um, number Jeez. one answer for the finished whiskey that got their significant other interested yeah. was... Angels Envy Rye. Angels Envy Rye. And why might that be a good one? Oh, because it's like drinking dessert. Mm-hmm. It's like Christmas in a bottle. It's like Christmas in a bottle. All year long. All year long. Goes amazing with pie at Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's uh, or just by itself, or just by itself in a cute little glass. Yeah, absolutely. So All Angels of Rye. Tuesday. The uh, second one was the Parker Heritage Collection Orange Carousel finish, um, and I'm then that. yeah, it's it it was kind of controversial uh, because Parker Heritage Collection is typically like the whiskey enthusiast bottle of all bottles to get and when they released one that was finished and it was very orangey it tasted almost like an old-fashioned mm. people were were kind of upset about that mm. um also a lot of people said yippee Kaye, okay um which you've had that okay. a number of times um that one's pretty good except that they discontinued it because they needed the juice that was going to be used for the yippee Kaye releases for some other projects that they were working on and the last, which uh, is pretty difficult to find, would be Midwinter Night's Dram, which is very nice. It's in the same vein, I feel like, as Angels of Rye. Doesn't taste the same, but you know, it's got all those nice sweet flavors. Yeah. Uh, so that that one was interesting. And then uh, the last one was Basil Hayden's Dark Rye. Okay. When people are not used to drinking the. You know, higher proof spirits. The the Basil Hayden's is a really good entry point for them. I and mean, we do have friends that like started on Basil Hayden's. Like that's that was the thing. Basil Hayden's was one of the first 
bottles that I bought when we actually went to we, we actually went to Whiskey Cake for someone's birthday. I got a glass of Angel's Envy bourbon, loved it, mm -hmm. went to the store, bought that, bought a Basil Hayden and a couple others, just trying them side by side, and that was kind of my one of my entry points. Um, so the fourth thing that people said got their significant other into whiskey were whiskey related experiences. So uh, some of the things mentioned were like road trips, sure. which made me think of us. Yeah. Um, this wasn't really for whiskey, but I used to collect wine. Yeah. And you didn't like red wine at all. It was just Not at all. too bitter for you. Full body shutter, like yeah. blah. It was gross. And then what happened? Uh, well, we went to Napa uh -huh. with my best friend and her husband. Uh -huh. um, so three of the four of us drank wine. <laughs> um, I just wanted to be with my people. So uh, 25 wineries and five days later, we walked into Chateau Montalena, which to this day is my favorite winery because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a glass of red wine. I should remember what it is, but I don't. Um, it was their cab. And I, I didn't shudder, and I was like, there's hope. So, if it can work for wine, it could work for whiskey. Another thing people recommended were date nights to whiskey-focused establishments, like, you know, there's places around here that we go to, Union Bear, um, J. As Theodore's. Long, as long as you don't lose your husband to a whiskey person next to you. That is a thing, because uh, I talk to strangers about whiskey don't do that. out in public. You can't bring your spouse to uh, a whiskey thing and then talk to the whiskey strangers. You can, it's just you not a good idea. You can't do it, it's not good. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Hey, nice hat. Hey, thanks. Nice lanyard. Nice rocks glass. Thanks, man. <laughs> nice travel case. Nice blend topper. Thank you. Nice candle. Nice bottle bag. Thanks, man. That's a nice tumbler. Nice woman's t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Nice uh, extra schmedium shirt. Get yourself some nice things and get all the compliments that come along with it. Shop bourbonrealtalk.com. Another whiskey related thing is bottle hunting. So I, it's, it's happened before. What happens is when a whiskey drops in an area, it's available at all stores for like a few hours, maybe a day, right? And most of the stores have like a limit one. So it's happened before where- You rope your spouse in. You rope your spouse in and you're like, I need you to follow me 15 minutes behind to all of these stores so that I can get these bottles. And I've heard stories of significant others getting so curious about like why like this bottle is why is this such a big deal it's a $30 bottle right why do I have to quit doing what I'm doing and drive all around and they're like all right I want to try it if it's that special and that has helped kind of break through for a handful of people okay and then uh advent calendar mm -hmm. has been something that's helped people um, our good friend uh, Alex Baptista does uh, advent calendar every year and it's like a kind of a competition and you, you helped me with that, didn't you? That, that was fun. It was, um... It was finished. It was yeah, like it was, finished whiskey yeah, competition. Yeah, which was super fun. Yeah. And so, you know, Advent Calendar, you get to try a, a little bit of a lot of different things, and that can help you to get over that hump, if you will. And then um, number five was just the power of suggestion, like epic bottles. Okay. Right? And so there were a number of people that were like, my my significant other didn't like whiskey at all. And then I gave him a taste of, you know, Pappy Van Winkle 15 and they loved it, which I kind of identify with because the first wine that you liked was like this super expensive. Oh, super expensive. Same with scotch. The first scotch I had was, it was like, of course you liked it. That's yeah, it's super expensive. super expensive scotch. Yeah. So, so that happens. Yeah. So power suggestion. And then um, distillery tours are, it's hard not to fall in love with the people. Sure. You know, like if I, if I. There are brands that I don't like their whiskey at all, but I love them as a brand because we had such a good experience. Yeah. Not that the whiskey's bad, it's just, it's not for me. Not for her, but yeah. I've seen her get into a fight with a troll online over a brand that she doesn't even like that much. Oh, like not, like I won't even drink it. But she loves the people there so much. <laughs> They're so nice to me. So distillery tours, uh, and then, you know, YouTube videos. If you find something that's interesting, 
you can share it with your significant other. Sometimes that'll spark a thing. And then if their favorite actor <gasps> makes a whiskey, that is a good way to get your significant other. So Outlander, yeah. they have the Sassanac, yeah. Sassanac whiskey. And, and who then, else? Um, I, I don't know their names. Okay. So we've bought whiskey from Ian Summerholder and Paul Wesley yes. from The Vampire Diaries. The Vampire Diaries. Actually, best. very, very good. And we still need to, we just got a new cask strength mm -hmm. that they just came out with. Um, I also bought a, um, a smoked rye and a blackberry gin um, from MF Libations, which is uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Um, if you are a Grey's Anatomy fan, that would be um, Denny Duquette. If you are a Walking Dead fan, it would be Negan. So the sixth thing that people said would work is helping them with tasting techniques. So, um, you, you know, people were talking about, you know, not taking a big swig, um, maybe putting a little on your lips and, and tasting it so that you're not getting too much, adding some water and letting your your palate acclimate right so you don't want to take somebody who's not used to drinking whiskey and give them you know some super hot barrel proof sure. um, and have them do it like a shot they're gonna hate that experience but if you can slow the process down uh, you know teach them how to properly nose the glass um, sometimes tasting notes make it more personal and you can kind of make it a game and and most of the time, but not always, it's the, the husband trying to get the wife interested. Wives have better palates than men. They do. And they're usually they better at picking out uh, tasting notes. I think it goes back to that hunter-gatherer instinct, right? Uh, you guys have a memory bank of scents that maybe we don't have. And so, you know, it, just kind of making it a game and fun, that was something that people said helped. And then the last thing that they recommended was taking advantage of some sort of a temporary need, right? So you went on an extremely calorie-restricted diet. God, it sucked. Yeah, it sucked. And uh, there was no wine. No wine. Why was there no wine? Because there's sugar in wine. There's residual sugar in wine. It's like the saddest thing. Do you know what doesn't have residual sugar? Whiskey. Whiskey has no residual sugar. So 60 to 80 calories versus 150 to 180 calories. Right. And so that was part of what pushed her deeper into her interest in whiskey is she wanted to have a drink at night with me and relax while we watched a movie or whatever. She couldn't have her wine. So, you know, take advantage of a diet. And just have your wine. Right. I feel like with us, I just had to like, I said this a lot, Get I had to get on board or get out of the way. Sure. Right. Like whiskey uh, whiskey and whiskey Facebook groups and all of the things started to kind of take over our lives mm -hmm. um, so I, I just had to get on board or get out of the way either you were going to have this whole other thing that didn't include me mm -hmm. or I was just gonna have to go um, and as you can imagine this guy does great in crowds um, he's a people person and he can talk to anyone and blah, 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 blah. And I would just rather be under the table hiding from everyone. Yeah, it takes weeks of preparation to get her on. Oh my god! So if you want to throw a nice comment down below, she's probably going to read them all. So... Yeah, I just... And if you, wanna, if you want to put a hateful comment down below, I will block you from the channel and she'll never see it. No, I'm tough. I can... I can... I'll, I'll block it. you. Anyways, but, uh, um, so yeah. the, the, the other answer that we got was that they hope their significant other hates whiskey because it's more for them. Okay. And I, I, I don't, I don't like that. I like to, I like to share things with you. Yeah. So if this is your first time watching the channel, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our show philosophy. We are all about bringing people together around bourbon. Uh, part of the reason why that's important to me is because I lost my brother to suicide in 2014. And in the aftermath of that, and trying to make sense of it all, I realized that he must have felt very separated and alone. And I wanted to find ways to get people so that they knew that they were part of a community and they felt connected. And I started to notice the connective power of whiskey. So that's part of the reason why I started this channel because I figure if I can get you connected to whiskey, the whiskey will do the rest of the job and get you connected to others so that you don't feel the way that my brother did. And 
in that process, I also started to see kind of the underbelly of, you know, online social communities. And there was some troll behavior, people being hateful to other people that they didn't even know online. But that made me realize that if they can be hateful, there's nothing that keeps me from being full of love for you and loving you. And that's why I end this podcast the same way. And that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we love you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Road. Can I just point out <laughs> real quick that she's gone so far past not being interested in whiskey that she has particular batch Batches releases that, that she prefers. And she's like, don't give me this batch. I prefer this other batch. Okay. You can try it again. Get that other stuff away. A whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary. Idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.